All right. Say hello first. Yes, I'm Elizabeth. Hello. Um, and I'm going to be talking, as Scott mentioned, about the Process Capability Database. So this is a list right now of all of our benefits and capabilities that we have with the database. Our main goal is to make modeling faster, more accurate, more consistent, um, using real tolerances, using real data, um, your real materials. You, we want to incorporate everything you're actually using um, when you are manufacturing something. So what we use is we take historical data or your knowledge base, and then we create a database within DCS. Um, we like to categorize each of these tolerances um, from your knowledge base by material, process, and feature type so that we can filter and categorize through maybe your list of thousands of different um, possibilities of tolerances and easily find the one you want to apply. Um, we can create tolerances on features, on points, um, and they, they're automatically created once we highlight um, the feature or point you'd like to create a tolerance on. And you'll, be, you'll see a demo of how to do that. We can link existing tolerances and existing GD&T to this database. Um, there's just a new button at the bottom of our, each of our tolerances that will link to, um, it has a link to the database option and then you, it'll take you to the database and you can select which one you want to link. We can additionally import CMM measurement data from QDM. QDM, as Ben mentioned, is our other software that is quality data management and this includes all kinds of measurements, points, whatever, whether you use CMM or whatever. We can take those exact values that you see in your plant and apply those as a tolerance um, just by importing that. So I'll demo that a little bit too. And finally, multiple tolerances can be linked to the same database parameter. For instance, um, one tolerance in the database, can you can choose all different tolerances in your model to mimic that exact same tolerance. And then if you have all these linked tolerances, we have one button that you can update all of them together. OK, so I'm just going to give you an overview of our workflow to create a new tolerance. So um, maybe this would be as you're starting a new model and you want to start off with the database and then create all new tolerances according to that database. Uh, what you'll do first is create your custom database. This is an example, and I'll show you again how to do that. Um, then you have your, your model with points. And all you're going to need to do is select either the point or the feature. When you right click, we have this new option here called Add Tolerance. And what that does is it'll pop up the um, link to database box and you can, this is your list of all database items. Then you can, um, then you'll see in your tolerance, it created a new tolerance for you and then it's linked right here. So that's starting with a new one. We can also use existing tolerances. So say you want to add a database to your existing model and you already have it done. All you need to do is open up your tolerances, and then it can be a feature tolerance, uh, point-based tolerance, GD&T, as I mentioned. Um, and then we just need to click this link to database button. It will pull up your database, and then once you double-click to select, it'll show up down here, and also the range and offset values that were in the database will show up in your tolerance. So now I'm going to go through a, a quick video showing you each of these functions and how to implement them. Okay, so first we're going to go into creating a database. So I open up a model and I already have a model with points and features in it, so I'm just going to use this one. Um, this is the database button. It's, there's also one in the drop-down from the 3DCS menu. And I'm going to the database editor. So this is where you can see what your database looks like within our software. So I'm going to create a default database, which you'll all have the option to do, and it's a template, more or less, for you to fill in your own tolerances. So I have um, 20 tolerances here, and I'm going to save the file. Um, you always need to save it because we load it in a different area. It saves the CSV file, and that's readable to the program. So I'm just going to call this the default one, um, and it confirms that it's saved. Okay, so now if I want to go edit it, it's easiest to edit in CSV. If you're, you're comfortable with Excel and that's the output here. So we can just go in and edit it here and it will save and update within your model. So across the top, there are a couple variables we have to define first. Um, I'm right now at the material type. 
level. So I can put in all different materials, aluminum, composites, whatever you happen to be using in your model. Um, everything, every material you're going to link to, you need to list up here at the top. So you can list as many or as few as you want. Uh, the next part we're listing are the process types, such as machining, casting, molding, forming, whatever type of process. And all of these uh, variables you're adding up at the top here, they're just to filter and categorize each of your tolerances. So it'll be easier to find them when you have big long lists and large databases. Um, the final is feature type, and that's like surface, a hole or a pin, a slot, um, whichever. Now the columns down on the, at the bottom here, those are your different tolerances. So reading across each column, we'll see there's a range, offset values, um, and then you also see those uh, variables that we add at the top. Now we're going to add those to each type of tolerance. So this is a demo. I'm just going to drag the columns down. So the first 10 measures are aluminum and so forth. Um, but you can just type in any type of materials that it is, give it a name, give it a process, and tell them what type of feature that is. So that way you, you'll be able to find it later on when you're trying to um, search out the tolerance. I hope it's a little small, but hopefully you can see it. And when you open it on your own, you'll be able to see it. Um, but these are just CSV files, like I said. And you can see you can edit it, add, you can add lines, um, change any of these. You can use process three, feature three, as, um, as I have here, or you can put in uh, actual values. OK, so this is, I've created a file. Um, you have to save it, and I'm going to overwrite what's already there. And then the next part is we have to load it. So we, we have a file, but it's not loaded into the model yet. So I click the dot, dot, dot button and load the file. And when I click Load Database and Show Link Info, you can see no tolerances are linked to the database yet, because I just created it. Um, and I haven't added anything. So now we're going to see how to add those tolerances or create new ones. So to create a new one, um, I'm going to show you a neat way. This is We just select points in one part, for example. Um, and let's say all these three points are just surface points, and we want to add a tolerance on that. So I just selected those, right-clicked, and clicked Add Tolerance. And this window pops up. So this is adding a tolerance, but it doesn't know which tolerance in the database you need to add. So the three bars at the top help you sort through those categories that you've just labeled in the, in the database. So I'm in Composite and Machining. And now I can see which features I'm going to use surface features. And these points are all on the surface. So that leaves me one option left for applying this tolerance. So those points showed up right in the tolerance. Um, the range is there. That was from the database. And then you can see it's linked to that specific uh, tolerance in the database. And I can go back, say, link to, and change it to anything else. Um, just by double clicking, it will add a different tolerance. And you can do that with features as well or, um, or existing tolerances, which you'll, you'll see next. So you can see it's added to the tree, and it's linked. And then these are existing tolerances. Notice the link to database is empty, that box. So I can just link it now. And it will override whatever no tolerance number was there. And that's the same with your gd &T. So now you can see the range has been changed and it's linked. And that's all these different types of tolerances work. OK? Now when I show the link info, you can see that there are two tolerances that are linked to this database. And I can double click on them to open them and edit or just view them. And nothing is lost yet. They're linked and good. So now I'm going to show you how to change out a, da a database, get a new one, and to import them from from your CMM database in QDM. So I'm just in the editor right now, and I'm going to say open. And I previously saved a CSV database. Um, this one has a lot more tolerances in it, a lot more information, um, and it's just an example. Um, so you, have, you can have multiple databases just as CSV files and to view them. So I can view this in the CSV editor uh, again. 
I can edit it here even though it's already created. Uh, and you'll see it looks similar to the one I just created from default, but it has a lot more information. Okay, so I'm not going to save that one because that's already been created. And I'm going to load it. So click the ellipsis and double click on your new, your new database. And then I say load. And you see it lost the link. That's because it was linked to the old database. So I need to double click and relink it to the new database um, if you want. Otherwise, it'll just default to the last tolerance it was at. It just stays. Um, so now the range was 7 from the previous database. Now the range is 2 because you're using the new database. And then when I ask for the link info, now you'll see that tolerance is linked and the other one has still lost its link. Okay. The next option is to go from QDM. Um, some of you might be familiar with QDM. This is our, our closed loop. We see uh, here's our actual um, aircraft skin. Um, this is plant data. Go ahead, Ben. Oh, okay. So I just want to reiterate. So QDM is, is uh, sort of a plant and manufacturing tool. Um, and then what you're seeing, of course, like this was saying, was your plant data. So QDM pulls in your measurement data or um, from Excel, from measurement devices, from uh, measurement programs and software, it allows you to aggregate it and create reports. So you can even see here this is a report actually made in QDM. Okay. So we're looking at the skin here, and this is all the data for that skin, so it's not perfectly made. So what we're going to do is export the DCSDB2 file, which is just a CSV file, and we want to use this actual output as an input tolerance to our model to kind of tie the two together. So now we're using actual built data of uh, products that we're, we're making. We're pulling that data in and applying that to our model. So, so what you're saying now is the, the tolerance is going to be the variation that we saw actually in the, the plant itself. Yes, instead of just creating a, a range and offset value to predict what will happen, we can actually apply what is happening. Okay, so the way we do that, um, you saw I just jumped back to Katia here, and I'm in the, the go to database editor, and there's this option here that's add range offset items from CMM file. I'm going to choose that, and then I just choose the CSV that I saved from QDM. Okay, and what this does is it just depends it onto the end of whatever database I'm currently using. So you can see all these new items here are all those measurement data from, from QDM. Okay. So I don't have to reload it because it's just been added to the current one. Now if I try to link this other one that's still unlinked, I can see when I scroll all the way to the bottom, those tolerances are now there and can be linked to any, any tolerance in my model. So again, this is real plant data. And you can see the numbers have changed. When you say linking, you're talking about applying these processes to as those tolerances. Yes. Yep. And now, um, so that added that one in. Okay. Let's see. So our next part is just to link and update multiple tolerances. So instead of just doing one, we want to be able to link maybe four tolerances usually wouldn't be in the same part, um, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to link uh, surface tolerance, uh, position tolerance, and feature tolerances all to the same uh, tolerance in the database, which is called pin size. Obviously, it's not completely um, what you would normally do, but you can see we can link everything to the same thing. And right now, the range is 5 and the offset is negative 1. And later on, we're going to see how to change that. So we're linking them all together. And it's no problem. You can link different ones to the same ones. Um, and now you can see all four of those tolerances are in the link tolerances. So what I want to do is change the value. Instead of five, a range of five, I want to change that to a range of three. So I just open the CSV file and type it in. And I can just edit right in here to the range. I just type in my range of three now in the pin size. And I have to save and overwrite the file so that it um, it will update in my in my model. So I'm overwriting it now. Okay. 
And all I have to do is hit the update model with values from database. And you'll get a warning that says it updated all four items that are linked. So now if I double click and open those, you'll see the range has changed from five to three. And you'll see they're all linked because they've all changed from five to three. So that's just a quick way. And then if you don't, um, if you don't like that, you can unlink it just by double clicking on this first line here. And it will just stay at whatever it was left at. And then you can either relink it or just leave it as is. Just saying if I've got a lot of similar tolerances throughout my model, I can update all of those tolerances just by changing one value in my database. Exactly. Just going into your CSV and changing that one number. Very nice. I can see how that can make updating or changing um, models from design to design very quick. Yeah, that's our goal. So in conclusion, our goal is faster, more accurate, and more consistent. Um, hopefully, if you have different people working on the same model, you can all use the same database. Everyone has the same values. Um, and it's quicker because you don't have to define all different tolerances. So that's it for database. <laughs>